All right, guys. The objective of the game for Q's are is the bases. You tag each other enemy. You got a red team, you got a green team. You tag each other. Besides tagging each other, you're tagging the enemy's team. You got bases. Bases are right on the ceiling. Looks like a massive UFO spider looking object. You'll notice it, you'll see it. Green team has one, and red team has one. The objective is you go right under it, you grab your gun. You have to go under it, you cannot shoot it from far away, guys. It will not work like that. You have to get into the base. You gotta go right under the base. You have to get into the base. You have to go right under the tube. You see that tube? You'll see a little white, little light. How do you call it? You start shooting it, you'll see Chris's lights come on. Shoot it again. The base will be tagged. You'll see lights go off. You'll see you hear a big man's voice. That means you have tagged the enemy's base. That is 1,000 points for you and 10 points for the team. Speaking of points, do not tag your teammates. Friendly fire is off, guys. You will get negatives. So if you're on the red team, don't tag your red team teammates. If you're on the green team, don't tag each other. You will get negatives and on the green bar for your scorecards. Now, when the game ends, you'll hear a big voice. You'll hear one of the marshals. The marshal stands for staff members. They will speak on the intercom. You have to re-energize. So when the game is over, you cannot just go back into the dressing room. You have to energize. And what that means is you just go back to one of these and you just scan the game six inches away. The only reason why you have to do that, guys, if you guys are curious why, is so the computer can, can dial your scorecards so you can get your scorecards. If you don't energize, you don't get your scorecards, so you don't know how we did. So, and also, you have to remember, remember your numbers when you energize. So, when you energize, remember that number when you go down to the lobby for your scorecards. I'm going to shoot you. I'm going to go over the rules and explain Okay, hold on. Hey guys, you just watched the first call with Joey. My name is JP and we're going to go over second call. Second call is basically going over these rules right here. There's five of them. We want to ensure safety for our guests and everybody that plays this game. So please follow these rules and the marshals or staff members will not have to exit you out of the game. The only person I want to exit is this motherfucking piece of shit in the fucking building. Rule number one, hold the laser with two hands. Each of those lasers has two handles. You have two hands. It's not a coincidence. Fucking right, ain't no damn coincidence, bro. These two motherfucking hands are break your goddamn face. Oh, if only I could. Rule number two, do not climb. If you climb on our arena objects, they will fall onto you. Splat you like a bug. It is not very fun. Don't do it. We have to replace them. It takes a long time. Yeah, that's the reason why QZAR went out of business. Well, that because of COVID. But no, this piece of shit, bro. The reason why I keep chewing on this guy is because he is ser he's a serious manipulator. He has extreme bipolarism. For the years I've known this asshole, he's never treated me well. He's never treated me with respect. He's always been chewing on me. Yo, fuck this piece of shit, bro. But again, I have to have him in this video because he's a part of QZAR, unfortunately. Uh, go ahead, fact, fact. Just don't do it. Don't climb. It's also hard to break this rule if you have both hands on your laser. Rule number three, do not run. Running in the arena can cause a lot of problems. If you're running at full speed and you hit a wall, you're most likely gonna break your nose or any object on your body. Just don't do it. You can also damage the laser or seriously hurt somebody around you. And that's all he's ever done. You've been hurting everyone around your whole life. All you ever ever do is fucking hurt people. So c carry on, white boy. Can kick our so don't do it. Rule number four, no physical contact. If you're really that mad about laser tag and you're not doing very well, don't punch somebody. Don't grab anybody's laser. Don't push it out of the way. Don't grab anybody's hair. Man, what that's that that's a lot coming from you, bro. Talk about physical contact. This motherfucker always wanna fight somebody. Just find a marshal or sack member and ask him to exit you out of the game because you're not doing well. Rule number five, keep that strap around your neck. Each laser has a strap. It goes right around your neck. The reason for that is to ensure the safety of the lasers. It also ensures arm length. It keeps you, everybody in their bubble. These five rules are the very important, most important rules of laser tag. Is to keep a fun, friendly, safe environment. Please don't break these rules. In case of an emergency, there is an emergency exit in the base. It is behind the red base. You will see it. It has exit on there. It's the emergency exit. In case of an emergency, the white house lights will come on, the music will stop, the black lights will turn off. Everybody calmly, please make your way to that exit. 
keep your packs and lasers on. We'll play laser tag outside. The game is over when it's over, and we are serious about that. On a final note, if there's anybody with heart conditions, epilepsy, allergic to artificial fog, smoke, or mist, or pregnant, we do not recommend you play this game. <laughs> Yeah, of course you thought. Yeah, coming from this guy, this guy was the worst when it came to emotional support. That going like cancer, diabetes, anything, or anyone that had any problems in our circles. This guy was a piece of shit, bro. Seriously, I do not know why I put up with such a fucking inhumane bastard like him. But if you have any of those issues, including asthma, please let the marshal or staff member know immediately. Thank you so much for your time, guys, and please follow these rules and make laser tag fun for everybody. Yeah, bullshit. Now, you know what's the funniest thing, guys, is uh, Q's are Tampa. It was a family-friendly event, but they would have these things called, what you're looking at right now on the screen, it's called Bikini Laser Tag. Yeah, you heard that right. Bikini Laser Tag. There would be BYOB, I believe it, bring your own beer. Uh, they, the place did not have a license. They didn't have a license to serve any alcohol, so this was an event where everybody would get really fucked and and you can't tell me which is bullshit nobody can tell me in this goddamn building but these people would bring heavy amounts of drugs and you would see people on some seriously crazy shit people would be dancing to some laser shows and music don't get me wrong overall it was an awesome experience you know working those nights for bikini laser tag you know seeing the women i mean yeah you know you know that clubby club vibe besides that they really could have done a lot more they could have really expanded but no this is just the way they they stayed and of course when uh the pandemic struck that was basically the end of qzar the covid 2020 fucked the business and that was the last of qzar and it shut down in tampa florida you know this is the overview the whole time up here you can see a whole the whole time of uh, qzar you can see how this is the green area uh, following the green base this is the red area following the red base with the red base energizer here, and the energizer there, and the green energizer here, and the green energizer there. There are two smoke points in the game, smoke tires. You can see this rail up here, and you can see this rail up here. Just because you're on the green or on red, does not mean you, you have to be on this one. You can go to any which one you want, does not matter. You can go to this one, or you can go to that one. How to get into the rail? Well, that's simple. When you're walking in this area, you'll see a little rail or walkway. You just follow it up and it'll take you straight up to the snipe tower and that's you can't go view the whole entire map. Now, this little blue spot right here in the middle, that's what I like to call a dead zone. There are no protected areas here. You can get shot from here. You can get shot from both snipe towers from here and here. So this is a bad no no spot. Now, a good protection will be right here or right there in these blocking walls that you can see in the map. I'm sorry for the audio, guys. JP's a fucking retard and the camera was set really badly. Oh,